Rebuilding a Tangy Model Steam Engine, Part 9. Making and fitting the cylinder cover. When Simon Hudson of the Steam Workshop gave me this engine, there were quite a few parts missing. The missing parts were the connecting rod, the piston rod, the crosshead, the piston and the cylinder cover. In this episode, I'm going to make a new cylinder cover for the engine. So I found a suitable piece of brass. It's in the chuck of my small boxwood lathe. I'm facing it across the front first. Then I'm going to turn it to the size required to match the diameter of the cylinder. The outside of the cylinder, that is. I will also be turning a register on this piece of brass to be a snug fit in the inside diameter of the cylinder. The tip on this tool is getting a little bit blunt and so what I'm doing is pulling the tool backwards because that part of the tip has had less wear than the main part that does most of the work. With the piece of brass faced, it's time to turn it down to the diameter of the cylinder, which I'm checking first of all with my digital caliper. And I should be able to do this in a couple of cuts. It doesn't need a lot removing from it. I take a quick sample cut, and if this is the wrong size, it doesn't matter because this is the part that's going to be turned down to fit inside the cylinder bore. A quick check with the caliper tells me that this diameter is okay, so it's time to take the cut. The first cut is the deepest. I wonder if that songwriter was a machine operator. Anyway, the first cut is the deepest and I'm going to take a finer cut to get a better finish. A few viewers, for some reason, have asked me if I would run the lathe operations in real time. So here's a first. This is running in real time, just as it was filmed. When you do quite a lot of machining, it's easy to forget that you're cutting metal. And when you think about it, it's a very simple principle, but it's clever at the same time. The very hard tool tip cuts the softer metal. Brass is a very soft metal, other metals are not soft in the slightest. Here's a finishing cut, and as you can see, it's quite fine. Even by taking this fine cut, the finish isn't brilliant. But I'm not too worried about that, because the finish isn't brilliant on the rest of the engine. I'll probably polish up this cylinder cover a little bit once it's finished. Using the caliper one more time confirms that this piece of brass is exactly the same diameter as the outer part of the cylinder casting. Now it's time to turn a shallow register that will fit inside the cylinder bore. This will centralise the cylinder cover on the cylinder itself when I bolt it all together. To start with, I'm turning this register a little bit deeper than it needs to be. Because once it's parted off, I need to machine the other side and I will have to hold this part in the chuck. In this clip, I'm using my digital caliper to size the bore. The caliper's not switched on, it doesn't need to be. I'm only sizing the cylinder bore so I can turn the piece of brass to fit. After I completed the job, the register was a very good fit in the cylinder bore. So first of all, I'm going to clean it up with some wet or dry sandpaper just to remove the sharp edges. And here, I'm parting off the component. I don't need any cutting lubricant for brass because it's very soft and the tool is very sharp. In this clip, the piece of brass has been reversed and is being held by the register. I'm using a round nose carbide tip tool on the other side of the tool holder so it faces the work. And you can see clearly what I'm doing. I'm making it look like a cylinder cover. At the moment, I'm cutting a shallow recess. It's important to make sure that the distance between the outer part of the cylinder cover to where the recess starts is the same distance as the mounting flange on the cylinder, so the bolts will look like they're in the centre. Well, they will be in the centre. I'm doing all of this freehand, I don't need to measure it. My calibrated eye from years of experience tells me that this should be okay. If you're a beginner to this sort of thing, it's a good idea to practice on a scrap piece of brass before attempting a proper job. I reduced pieces of metal to swarf for no apparent reason for about a year when I first started doing this sort of thing. It was just part of the learning curve, and after a while you can get quite good at freehand turning, and it does save a lot of time. And what's the worst case scenario, you make a mess of it and you have to make another one. I need to drill some holes in the cylinder cover to fit the existing holes in the cylinder. And for this, I'm going to try and use my ink pad. I've pressed the cylinder casting onto the ink pad so it's full of ink. Now I'm pressing the cylinder cover onto the cylinder. Doing it this way doesn't always work, and as you can see, the marks are quite faint, but I think I can see where the holes should be. You could press a piece of paper onto the inked cylinder to get the hole positions, but you would need to cut out a hole in the centre of the paper to fit around the register. And what am I doing here, drilling a hole in a piece of mahogany? I'm about to drill the holes in the cylinder cover, and as the front part of the cylinder cover protrudes, I've drilled a shallow hole in the mahogany to locate the cover for drilling. 
I could have used my rotary table and indexed the part to drill the holes equidistantly around the perimeter. Two reasons why I didn't do that. One, this is a lot quicker. And the other reason is that I'm not fully sure that the holes are equidistant on the cylinder itself. When I was using the small center drill, I made sure that I spotted the holes exactly in the middle of the marks. This is a very old engine, and in those days there was no such thing as CNC, and some of the engineering was, well, not bad, but not perfect. In this clip, once again, I'm holding the cover by the register and just cleaning across the front face and taking the sharp edge off. As this steam engine originated in Germany, I would think that the original threads were metric. When I fitted a 7BA bolt, it was too tight, and when I fitted an 8BA bolt, it was too slack. So I thought it would be a good idea to re-thread the holes 8BA, and that's what I'm doing at the moment. When I tried my cylinder cover on the cylinder, it only fitted in one position, and that's not my fault, I duplicated the holes that were there, but as I mentioned earlier, this is an old engine, and the holes around the cylinder were not perfect. Also, parts of this engine are not very well machined. The steam chest was left in what I would term to be a rough cut. So here, I'm removing the tool marks on some wet or dry sandpaper, and it should look a good bit better when it's finished. And indeed it does. I've fixed the steam chest cover in place very loosely using a couple of the original bolts. I'll probably use cheese head bolts for the cylinder cover too. The engine's starting to take shape. The next job will be machining the crosshead, but that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.